Okay, we then can write Newton's law of universal gravitation like this. Okay, F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Same thing we got over here, except we got the G instead of the K. It's a capital G. And capital G now is a universal constant, we kind of think, uh, that's equal to this, our, a recent more accurate measurement. Uh, and actually, we had it down to 6.67 quite a while ago. We got several more uh, decimal places out there, but that's what we're going to kind of use unless we need something more precise. Try to put a satellite in orbit or go to the moon, you use a few more significant figures. Um, okay, so she's approximately this, and that's a force of mutual attraction. Okay, each of these attracts the other. Mutual attraction of point-like masses uh, where the force is along the line between the two centers. So for example, if you've got a mass here and a mass here, uh, you got a force here. And you got a force here. These are equal and opposite forces. They're both along the line. They're both attractive forces. So this is attracted to this, and this is attracted to this. Okay, now I don't quite have those parallel, but they're along the same line, and the line is through the center of the two masses. Of course, you can read about that um, with a better graphic. Okay, so we're going to uh, apply that. Okay. Here you got the Earth, and here you got a satellite. Okay. Now we're going to say satellite is at constant velocity in a circular orbit. Okay. Now at constant velocity in a circular orbit, it's going to have a constant centripetal acceleration. The class knew what that was. It's v squared over r. Okay. So, whatever the distance of this satellite from the Earth is. The centripetal acceleration has to be v squared over r. Okay, well, we're going to assume a satellite of unspecified mass m. It's in circular orbit of radius 20,000 kilometers. Okay, now the Earth is about 6,000 kilometers, between 6 and 7,000 kilometers, in, uh, has a radius of that, and this thing would be at about almost three times, about three times the radius. Should have run a little further out, but you get the idea. Okay, so there's the radius of the orbit, and now I want to know. Okay, well, centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Where does the acceleration come from? There has to be a force, a centripetal force. And people say, well, the centripetal force is going to be the mass times the centripetal acceleration, mv squared over r. That's right. Where does that come from? Where are you going to get an mv squared over r? force. Well, the only thing, if, if you just got the Earth and the satellite in a system, I and mean, there are other planets, there's a galaxy, there's a sun, there's a moon, but at this radius, um, most of the force comes from the Earth. And in practical purposes, you do have to worry about the moon at that, that distance. Um, so what you have is you have a centripetal force that comes from the gravitational pull of the Earth on the satellite. Of course, the satellite pulls on the Earth just as much as the Earth pulls on the satellite, but the Earth's got a lot more mass, and the pull has much less effect on the Earth. Okay, so the satellite's a lot less massive than the Earth, so we just have the uh, centripetal force on the satellite, and that is the gravitational force, so the two are equal. So my question is, what does the velocity have to be? Well, we have enough information to say what the, uh, we know what G is, we know R, we're given that, we know the mass of the Earth, one of these masses will be the Earth, and the other is just the mass M of the satellite, which is going to turn out not to matter. So if we do the arithmetic, setting the centripetal force equal to the gravitational force, and we solve for V. We take this expression with the information we have, we get the force, and we set that equal to m times v squared over r. Solve for v. Okay. 